welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then a very big hello. My name is Louise and today I bring you my most requested video of all time. Now, if you do not know about me, my name is Louise. I moved from the UK to Canada three years ago with my boyfriend, Jake. Um, and yeah, we live here. We love it here. We're permanent residents. And back when I first moved in 2019, well, actually, I think I uploaded it in 2020. I did a cost of living in Canada. Now that is one of my most viewed videos on my page um, ever and people to this day still watch it. And I kind of feel bad because that video was made in 2020 when the cost of living was a lot lower. It was before COVID and everything was so much cheaper and people are referring back to it. Now I will never delete that video because I feel like it's such a good comparison to look back on throughout the years of how things have like slowly got more expensive but we are now in 2023 uh, I've been in Canada three years during the pandemic and just like any other country prices are rising so I really wanted to do an up-to-date cost of living video for you guys and I'm going to be so real and so honest like I was in the last video and I'm going to tell you every single bill that I pay living here in Canada so you guys can see um, the comparison see if you can afford it see it compared to the UK and also I just want to do a little disclaimer before I start these are all my bills so my bills might be completely different to everybody else's bills also this is for Niagara Falls Ontario Canada which is so different to any other province and any other city for example if you live in Toronto um, that is going to be double than probably what I'm paying um, but then if you live in Calgary it might be half like every province is so different in price and every city that you live in is so different in price and I've learned that a lot since living here and making connections and things like that so let's get started into the video um, just before I start I have literally just got back from the English store because I'm filming a separate video today and I picked myself up a Fanta lemon. So I'm gonna crack this open and drink this. Not a cup of tea today, I've gone for a Fanta lemon. I haven't had a Fanta lemon in like four years. Fanta lemon's actually mo most known for like when you go on your holiday to like Spain or something, but. <coughs> if I close my eyes, I could be on a beach in Turkey right now but actually it's minus 24 degrees outside. So that is where I am not. So if you see me looking down to, I've got my trusty laptop here uh, with my bank statement so I can see my ins and outs. Um, so how I did the video last time was I went through each bill individually and then I transferred it back to English pound two. And that's exactly how I'm gonna do it here. So the last video I started at my biggest expense, which is my rent. Uh, back then I was paying 1,000. 250 1450 something like that um but i'm actually going to save rent to the very very end um there is a few reasons for that and i will explain it at the end but we got our house during the market crashing just before covid um so i don't want to say that first when i want to go over what the pricing is now to rent somewhere so we're going to start off with our bills. Now, I do believe the bills in the UK have rise significantly. Um, I know you guys all have these little meters in your house now, and it's just so sad to hear that people can't afford to heat their home. So I'm not saying these prices to rub it in people's faces. I just am doing it for educational purposes. And yeah, we're going to go along our bills first. So we have three major bills here in Canada for your house. You have your electric, you have your gas, and then you have your water over here is called hydro so hydro is your electric bill which is so weird because at home I would have thought that would be a water bill but no hydro is electric and then you have your gas bill which is the same as the UK and then you have your water bill now where I live um, it's your gas and your hydro go out monthly and then your water goes out every three months bear in mind um, I live in a class as a two bedroom house but I have four bedrooms I have two on the main level and two in the basement um, and my hydro bill for the month it literally it came in two days ago was $85 in total so we normally put away $100 a month for our hydro. Sometimes it is more and sometimes it is less. Um, just bearing in mind that we have our, um, our heating is not done by radiators. It's done by fans in the floor um, and things like that. In the summer, we have our air conditioning on 
constantly and in the winter we have our heating on constantly um, it's actually a law here in Ontario that you can't have your heating on less than I think it's 18 degrees or something like that because the pipes will freeze so you do have to run your heating our bill this this month for our electric which is called hydro here was 85 dollars and in pounds that would be 52 pounds um, a month and we don't unplug anything our plug sockets are not like home where you have to turn them off on the wall they're just always on and we have everything plugged in so i think for the month 85 dollars it's very very good um which is 52 pounds the first bill so our gas bill at the minute is super high um jake said it is to do with always having the heating on as in the summer uh, our gas bill is super low but we used to put away 150 dollars for our gas um unfortunately it has raised slightly um ever so slightly um so we do pay a lot more in gas now so our gas is 200 dollars a month in the winter which just kills me inside but in the summer it can go all the way down to 80 90 dollars so yeah our last gas bill was 200 dollars um which equals which equals 123 pound how weird's that one two three very weird oh, so good so between our gas and electric, we normally do have $300 put aside for it, which is about £200. And it always does at, like level out. So in the summer, the gas will be cheaper, but the electric will be more expensive. So we never really spend more than £300 on those two items, um, which I think is pretty good for a house the size that we've got. The next bill is the water bill. Now, like I said, we pay that every three months. I actually think it's gone to a bi-monthly, so every two months. Um, now it's just currently changed, but it works out to be $100 a month. Um, and bearing in mind, that bill that's just come through we've had family stay with us since that bill um so that's probably why it's a little bit more, more than normal because there's like four of us that are showering or bathing and brushing our teeth and stuff like that so that is more on the more expensive range um i guess people with kids and stuff it's probably going to be the same as what i'm saying now so yeah we average a hundred dollars a month on our water and that equals to 61 pounds um i actually don't know what the water market's like at the minute in england i know it's the electric bill that's gone up um, I don't know about water um, let me know down in the comments if that's more expensive than at home or cheaper than home because I have no idea <laughs> there are our three major bills that we have really in our house is gas electric and water that every household is going to have as well when you move into it uh, we don't have me as a renting person I don't pay like property taxes or anything like that that is literally like the flat thing other than our rent which I'm going to talk to at the end so the next thing is obviously optional and that is our internet our tv contract our internet contracts and things like that um, and we also link that with our phone contract so I'm going to pull it all together in one um, and I will say obviously if you don't want to get internet and you don't want to get tv then this bill you can kind of just write off because it's a very big bill there is one thing that Canada is behind in and that is their internet and their phone plans it is so 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 expensive so yes we save more money on our heating and our electric but our phone plans and our internet and TV plans are ridiculous. We actually go with a company called Bell because we found that they were the best um, price, uh, the best for internet. Obviously I do YouTube, so I want a super fast uploading speed. And I just wanna say now that we pay for the most expensive package for internet. We have unlimited at like supersonic speed, um, like everything like that. And that is purely just because of YouTube to get my videos up if i didn't have to upload videos i don't think that we would pay for that um also we don't watch any tv whatsoever so we would probably cancel um bell apart from have like a bare minimum internet package but it was just worked out to be cheaper to link a tv package with the internet package of, uh, to get it down to a cheaper price jake pays for our tv his phone my phone and the internet of the house so there's four things there i'm dreading saying this price i literally hate like inside i'm like why do we pay this much for all this but i have to remember it's two phones it's house 
internet and it's a TV package too. So it's basically at home, think of it as your Sky packages and two phone plans like put together. But it equals $450. Love that. Like I said, that's TV, internet and phone, both phone plans is $450, which equals £278. Now, I think my plan at home was like 30 quid or something like that. And then Jake's was probably 30, so that's 60. And then I can't remember how much my Sky bill was. But yeah, that's one of the most expensive bills other than our rent that we uh, put out is £278, which is $450 on our TV, our internet, and our phone plans. Next up is another big one, and it's insurance, but obviously this is another optional one. Some people don't have insurance. We do because we have a lot of assets. We have both of our cars, we have our trailer, we have our house, um, we have yeah we we chose to have a very good insurance plan and also with our insurance is our car insurance which is exactly the same as the uk you have to have car insurance for your car before you drive it it is a bit different than the uk obviously i can do a separate video on cars and things like that but you have to insure your car rather than the person so if my car is insured that means anybody can drive it that has a driving license um so we have to just pay insurance per car which i think is great you don't have to then go and reinsure to go drive someone else's car um, and just put into it out there too we don't pay for road tax we don't pay for MOTs the only thing that we pay once you have your car is your fuel and your insurance monthly that is it so Jake pays for insurance for my car and his car and then we also have insurance um, for our RV and our house as well and in total it's $400 but please remember we don't have MOTs yearly you could be literally driving a car rust on wheels and it will not be taken off the road uh, because we don't have MOT. So once you buy your car and you've had it safetyed, it's called for the very first time, you don't ever have to have it safetyed ever again. And we don't have road tax, like nothing like that. There's just one insurance and uh, we pay 400 for that, which I don't think is that bad because we have house insurance with that and RV insurance too which is 245 so 245 pound for two car insurances rv and house um, which i'm really happy to pay with and the insurance is when you first move to canada for your car really expensive because they don't do the no claim bonus here um so you have to start off at like the highest highest one but it drops throughout the years and yeah that's how much we pay for both of our cars Obviously, one day we would love to save and own a house, but right now traveling is more important than buying a house and seeing the world. So yeah, we're very content in this house. But the reason I don't want to use my house as an example is because the house and market has got more expensive. Bearing in mind, it is slowly dropping by day. It, I felt like it reached the peak in like December, October, November, December. And January and February, it's slowly gone down again because uh, the last few days we have seen a few full houses on there for like 1,700, 1,800. And um, that is the price that I'm gonna go with and say that's how much we pay, even though we pay 1,650. Because I don't wanna say that, oh, we've got this amazing, four bedroom house for 1650 and then people move over here and they're like what is she on about I've only seen things for like 2000 um so yeah I'm gonna obviously be scrolling some houses here to show you but it depends what area you live in too like some of our friends have got apartments for like 1900 it's two bedroom it's absolutely gorgeous um and things like that but yeah it is hard a lot of places just rent out their basements which is like 1400 but then you've got someone living on top of you so for the purpose of this video i'm literally going to go with like the most common price which is like 1700 to 1900 so let's just go bang in the middle at 1850 and that's for a house and that's 1144 so yeah, rental prices, 
I've gone bang smack in the middle there, 1,144. Um, just remember though, if you are going for an apartment that has this price, most of them actually have bills included or you just have to pay water. So if you are paying that higher price range, um, it might be that you're not paying some of the other bills that I have listed. Um, so just be cautious with that because I live in like a full house myself. We have to pay for all the bills, but people that live in like the rent out the top or the bottom they might have shared bills so it's cheaper and things like that so i've just gone for the middle one which is 1850 which is 1144 pounds so before i go on and talk about groceries and things like that obviously we have two cars uh jake has a car and i have a car now i'm not going to go into detail how much we pay for those um because a lot of people just buy a car outright when they get here uh, me and jake both pay ours off monthly yeah, both of us pay off our cars monthly normally there's a three five or eight year plan that you can have with cards i think it even goes more than that um but i pay for mine individually and jake pays for his they're both our dream cars and um i don't really want to go into that because they're optional payouts too like if we didn't want to we didn't we wouldn't get these cars uh, we had an amazing car a honda when we first moved here we paid 2000 for it it lasted us the whole two years that we had it i absolutely loved it but when we got permanent residence our treat to ourselves was to buy ourselves cars and that's what we did and that's like an optional out so in total for our rent, our electric, gas and water, our car insurance, house insurance and our phone bill and electric, we play a grand total of $3,085 between us um, and that equals up to be $1,910 pounds obviously that is at today's rate if you look tomorrow that might be a different price but that's right now as it stands today we pay 1910 pounds for all of our bills um like i said we pay extra for our cars but that comes out of our own money but that's kind of everything that we split so we find that cost of living here in canada isn't too expensive the most expensive thing is our phone plan and our internet um, but like i said we can go down a package if we really wanted to but we just we can afford the more expensive one and I need it for the videos. And yeah, I don't think I've actually missed anything. Obviously, when it comes to fuel and groceries as well, fuel at the minute, and let me look at my local um, place so I can give you like facts. So fuel prices today in Niagara Falls is $1.37 a dollar, um, which is again very cheap compared to home which is 85 cents a liter um, obviously that's why we can afford the bigger trucks here like at home jake said he would never be able to afford to run the truck that we have because fuel is so cheap so yeah we average kind of 250 dollars um every two weeks jake fills up both mine and his car it lasts us the two weeks and my car normally takes about 80 to 100 dollars to fill it and then jake's normally about 100 to 120 dollars that's how much we kind of average 200 to 250 every two weeks which isn't too bad another thing that we pay for that i didn't talk about is obviously our groceries now groceries can be a lot more expensive here i have I do have a come shop with me actually um, down below but I can do a most recent one if you want to see that um, I have recently just got my big shop in so it'll be in like two weeks time but let me know if you want me to see that but yeah I think cost of living here some things are better some things are worse but I just wanted to tell you like a more up-to-date one and I hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below if you live in Canada and where you've moved from where you're living now or if this is your dream to move here what part of Canada would you like to move to let me know as well any other videos you'd like me to do I'm doing a lot more sit down information videos this time of year because if you do not know Ontario is going through the coldest winter that I have experienced in the last three years like I know people watching this from like Edmonton oh, Alberta and places like that are going to be laughing at me but it's like minus 15 outside and there's not a lot to do when it's that cold um I did go snowboarding and ice skating um and I was really bad at it but during the winter I like to do these sit down up to date videos for you guys and then as soon as May hits guys soon as May hits I'm going to be out in force I'm going to be camping I'm going to be doing all the fun stuff that Canada has to offer but um, let me know any other sit down videos that you would like me to do and I will see you in the next one bye